Listening Test 1, Section 1. Questions 1 to 7. In today's talk, I'm going to discuss the theme of animal communication, and I am going to define some of the latest investigation into the largest of all land animals. And that is the elephant, of course. Let me begin by briefly outlining the structure of elephant society. Elephants live in layered societies. The basic family unit is formed of small groups of adult females, who are related to each other, and their young of both genders. Now the females remain in their families for life, they are highly social, but male elephants abandon their families at about 14 years of age. They travel alone or assemble in small, loose groups with other males, occasionally joining a family on a temporary basis. When males are ready to mate, they wander widely, searching for receptive females. The family unit, on the other hand, often contains three generations, and it can remain stable for decades, or even centuries. Then, each family associates with between one and five other families, probably consisting of their more distant relatives. Researchers call these groups of families bond groups, and bond groups belong, in turn, to even larger groups called clans. So, elephants have a composite social structure. And like other social animals they have to be able to communicate. But what puzzled early naturalists was their ability to communicate over long distances. So, they set about researching this question. In one experiment, researchers fitted groups of elephants with radio tracking collars. And what they observed about their behavior really intrigued them because they found that there was some sort of coordination between families. For instance, two separate family groups might move in parallel to each other, miles apart, and then change direction simultaneously, either turning or moving towards each other. Now elephants have a keen sense of smell which they use whenever they can. But smell alone couldn't account for these synchronized movements, because the wind often carries odors in the wrong direction. So, the researchers concluded that the elephants were using their hearing instead, and attention then turned to the nature of elephant calls. In another test, researchers from Cornell University in America went to Edo Shaw National Park in Namibia, and they produced a recording of calls made by a female elephant to potential mates. Then they broadcast it. And they did this from a van which was parked more than half a mile from the water hole where several bull elephants were drinking. And two of these looked up, spread their ears wide, and then crunched through the bush towards the loudspeakers. As you can imagine, the researchers may have been alarmed at this point, but the elephants marched straight on, past them and their van, in search of a female elephant. But the striking aspect of this experiment was that, when they replayed their recording, neither the two researchers nor the rest of their team, who were filming from a nearby tower, could hear it. And that's because the sounds that they had replayed were below the lower threshold of human hearing. In scientific language, the sounds are infrasonic, 